All right. All right. All right. Hello and welcome to your presentation, Local Development for the Masses, Vagrant, Virtual Bot, Puppet, and the Calabox. Hope everyone's having very good. DrupalCon Austin. Yeah? Freaking fabulous operation, awesome conference. Glad to see so many people. And hopefully we can talk about some of your problems, give you some solutions, and otherwise just build the energy that's been happening all week. Uh, my name is Matt Cheney. I am a co-founder of the Pantheon, focusing on the products, magic, chaos websites, and ultimately trying to really help developers and to help all of my friends in Drupal, for which I've been doing pretty much my entire adult life, like have better tools, have more fun, and make the internet better. I think that's good for everything and definitely something that I know a lot of, a lot of you in the room here share. Um, I do believe I'll live forever, but when I do stupid stuff and say YOLO, it lacks a certain pop at that point. But we'll resolve those inconsistencies a lot of, uh, with, along with everything else that we're going to talk about today. Because part of the work that, uh, that we all do at Pantheon is to build tools to help developers make, make the internet better. That a lot of the things that every day we have to write code for, do config for, do setup for, are the same. That I do the same stuff, that Mike does the same stuff that you stow. And that's part of the awesomeness of Drupal is that we have open source, we have reusable components that other people can share and leverage and makes happen. And that as we look sort of into the future of the web, it's not just getting the right PHP code on the system, but it's about providing a whole ecosystem of integrated tools and technologies that can really sort of make all of this happen. And so this is definitely part of the sort of philosophy of what we're trying to do here and part of the value of open source. And that I really think that this uh, Calibox product that Mike is doing and a lot of the work he's done to help improve local development is really taking the kind of approach that Pantheon took to trying to create better development and hosting in a platform. Calibox is trying to solve those same problems for local development. So it is uh, my uh, pleasure to introduce my, uh, my friend uh, Mike to talk about himself and talk a little bit about the Calibox. Yes. <laughs> to uh, adjust this, because we have a size differential happening. Sweet, yeah, DrupalCon Austin. It's happening. Is that really? Yeah. Ah, thank you, John Peck. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, hi. My name is Mike. I'm a co-founder of Kalamuna. Much like Matt, I work on our, our products. And uh, as you can see by my thing, I like science and math and, and history and other things. And uh, when I was five years old, I accidentally lit a trash can on fire with a, a magnifying glass. No uh, so yeah, that happened. Anyway, yeah, so if you haven't heard, Kalamuna is a Drupal uh, agency in the San Francisco East Bay. We're in downtown Oakland. And we, uh, we like to make the internet for rabble-rousing companies and organizations. If you're here and you're from Pfizer, we will not work with you. So there you go. I said it. Thank you. But we also build products on occasion, which is what we're going to talk about today. And uh, that brings us to the presentation, which is, as Matt said, local dev for the masses, which is a vagrant uh, virtual box puppet and Calibox. And, uh, and now I'm going to bump it back to Matt to explain the space a little bit. And then we can um, go into the, into the magic, the deep magics. The chaos magics. So I think we're only as good as the tools that we have. I think that was part of my introduction remarks in that you know, the kinds of websites we build and the kind of work we do is standing on the shoulders of a lot of other people helping to make that better. And that having those tools are really important. Because like, honestly, doing Drupal is hard enough. Like figuring out the craziness that is everything that is Drupal 7 and will be Drupal 8 requires a lot of work and there's a lot of problems there. And that there are a lot of things that we need to get right to really do the best job that we can. And if we're going to win as a community together, if we're all going to be the kinds of developers we want, we're going to need those tools. And so it's really been very excellent over the last week to see all the folks here at the DrupalCon helping to solve those problems, collaborating together, and working down the, down, down, down the path of all of the different things we need to do to be really, really awesome at our jobs, at our work, uh, and for our people. And local development and making local development great is one of those problems, is one of the things that we really need to do to make sure that we can all be the best developers that we can. And by local development, I'm not just meaning getting PHP to run with a database on a computer. I mean, that is a start for sure. But I'm talking about a full stack. I'm talking about being able to use a lot of the modern technologies 
like Varnish and Redis and Solar on your local machine so that you can have a you know, more similar environment to what you're doing online that you can leverage and test and really make sure that what you are building is as close as to what your customers, your friends, your you know, volunteer organizations are able to see. And that, that beyond that, you can actually integrate with other things, that you can look at other cloud services, other hosting providers, and link those together with your local development, collaborate with your teams, and have a technology, an open source technology you can contribute to to help really do this thing. These kinds of things should be easy. It should be easy as simply turning on a button on your computer, whatever kind of computer you have, and being able to easily get into the world of Drupal development and start making really amazing red sites. So grab a seat on the black couch. Let's talk about a few of the problems, I think, with local development now, and then we'll get into a lot of the solutions and give you guys sort of things. I don't think you can smoke in here, although this is Rick Perry America, so maybe you can. Um, I do know that you cannot use spray paint, by the way, at this conference. It's, it's totally against the rules, but you can, in fact, discharge, discharge a firearm during a presentation, um, which does require 30-day notice and some approval from someone. Um, we unfortunately did. Uh, well, we'll see. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to ask just a few questions here. I mean, I know the answers to a lot of these because I've been doing this for a while, and a lot of my friends have been doing this for a while. And that, you know, when we're sort of doing, you know, local development and trying to set that kind of stuff up, like, there's problems with getting it set up, that each computer is different, getting the ports to work right, make sure the firewalls are there, make sure that the software survives, you know, the Mavericks update, or just in general, like, getting... Everything ready to do local development is a bunch of work. And when you're doing that work, it, it's work that, honestly, you're wasting against like other stuff that you could be doing. I mean, it's cool to tinker with stuff, having control of tech. That's extremely important. But if you're on a project and it's taking you an hour just to get set up with that project to actually start working on it, that's, that's time that could have been done creating other features on the project. And that's the kind of thing where I think from an efficiency standpoint, from building all together, why, why waste that project time? Why solve all of those problems? It's also been really painful to see in you know, the, various, the various organizations and companies that I, for which I'm aware, where the folks who end up doing the IT support, helping out with fixing people's local development, are some of the smartest technical folks in the company. It's the CTO or the lead devs that are going around and configuring this kind of stuff. And I mean, I know as like far as you know, all of us get our careers and as much experience as we have, we'll all be doing IT at some point for our friends and family who are like, you work in computers, please set up the Wi-Fi. But if you're in a professional organization, like you should, doing, having your best technical people have to set this kind of stuff up um, can be a little confusing. Plus, this is, this is freaking 2014. You know, shouldn't be, we have cars that can drive themselves. Like, why are we, like, manually editing VHOS configurations? We're starting Apache and hoping we didn't make a typo. Otherwise, all the sites on our local will go down. Like, there are better ways. We can make this technology. We can build these kinds of things. And we can solve these kinds of problems. Because we want one solution. We want one solution to rule them all. We want one thing that people can use. And this thing has to be an open source option. It has to be integrated with everybody who's working in this space. But we do want to bring them all in, in the cloud, bind them. Um, that's ancient Elvish. If uh, anyone wants to take a crap at that, crack of that in the QA, we can get with that. But I think one elephant in the room here is, is the MAMP. Um, this is the technology I've used. This is an attempt to try to create one solution. I know a number of you might use it. Who uses MAMP? Or who like, likes using MAMP, feels they're satisfied with that? I mean, don't be embarrassed. It's not, it's not necessarily a bad you thing. You should be embarrassed. <laughs> I mean... Look, I understand organizations of elephants as their logos may not be like the most popular, I mean, nationally, but that in general, um, MAMP is a good technology, but it's an old technology. It's been around for a while. It doesn't speak necessarily our language. It's sort of, it, it's sort of ancient. So, I mean, it does look like an elephant, absolutely. I mean, some I think looks like a dinosaur. And I think that like, it, there, are, there are, you know, evolutions and developments that happen in this world. So I want to sort of turn it back over to Mike to uh, talk about the, you know, creatious tertiary event that is the Calabox. Thank you, Matthew. That was nice. I like dinosaurs, so that, like, worked out really well. Anyway, yeah, so let's talk about, let's talk about the post-apocalyptic hellscape that uh, the Calabox creates, which is a world where only one thing exists, which is Calabox. Um, and, uh, yeah, so Calabox, it's uh, advanced dev tools for the people, and what that means is we want to provide something that's easy to use, like MAMP, but actually is useful and powerful. Um, here's a little bit of info about it. Um, 
what we're kind of talking about is that Calibox isn't even a local development environment. It's much more than that. What it actually is is a complete desktop to live workflow loop. And what that actually means is that your local development environment now can know about stuff that exists, exists outside of your computer. For example, Pantheon or Acquia or Aberdeen Cloud or Agar or any of those fun things. So what you can think about it as is really an extension of like your normal dev test live workflow. Now you have a fourth part of that called local or called Calibox <laughs> specifically if you're, if you're going to do that. And uh, you can have all those things linked together and you don't have to worry about all the kinds of problems that, that Matt talked about. So this is the problem that we've, that we've been working on, in Calib on uh, at Calamuna quite a bit. Um, we kind of worked on it originally as like an internal thing. But over time we realized that it could be powerful to a lot of people and helpful to a lot of people so we put it out there. So what is Calibox? Well, besides, uh, besides the Comet event that destroys everything else, um, it is these things. Currently, it is a native Mac OS application that was written in Node.js on the Node WebKit framework, which is really cool if you haven't used it yet. Um, that lets you build applications for, for Mac and, and Linux and Windows uh, on Node, which is cool. And it's a one-click installer. So like MAMP, you kind of download it and you install it, and it's, it's good to go, which is, which is really awesome. Unlike MAMP, it actually is a real Linux web server that has all the power tools that you expect and need to run a Drupal website and do development locally in a real sort of way. Um, right now, Calibox does workflow integration with Pantheon, so if you have a site on Pantheon, you can download it onto your computer really easily. You don't have to worry about setting up vHosts, as Matt mentioned, which is like a huge, a huge problem and is kind of an embarrassment that we still have to do that, considering all the other great tech that we have. Um, you can also spin up just like normal Drupal sites really easily. You know, if you just want to like, if you are, if you are like intimidated by the barrier to entry, when it comes to Drupal, like setting up a Drupal site, it's still kind of like difficult to do that if you don't know a lot about that sort of thing. With Calibox, you can download it, you can install the whole thing, and you can spin up a Drupal site in a couple of seconds, which is really awesome. You don't have to know what Git is or SFTP or any of those fun things. You can just get started right away. And when you're done, you can deploy it to, right now, Pantheon, but potentially other places in, in the future. Um, I was walking around yesterday in the exhibit hall. By the way, like, people have really like upped their exhibit game this year. Like, and I think, does everyone offer free beer now? Is that like a requirement? Because I feel like there was just lots of beer going on yesterday, which was, by the way, thank you. That was great to any people who have booths here that have free beer. But anyway, I was walking around. And I'm, I'm trying to explain to people why they should use Calibox, what Calibox is all about. And this one guy said, oh, so this is interesting. So Calibox is kind of like to local dev what Pantheon is to hosting, which is that local dev doesn't really exist as a term anymore if you have Calibox. And I said, yeah, that's awesome. That's a great way to explain what this is. And uh, that was really helpful. So that's a good analogy, I think, that we can use to like, try to describe like, this whole situation and to give you a better sense of what it is. It's not local development. It's more than that. Local development doesn't exist anymore because Calibox exists. Anyway, these are all the fun things that it comes with by default. Um, most of you know what these things are. You don't have to do any of the setup. They're all, just, they're all there for you right to begin with, and like, they're all optimized for Drupal. So if you want to like you know get started running a website or get starting debugging or like setting if you're setting up a developer who lives in Romania potentially, you can have them install this thing and they can be debugging code in a couple of minutes instead of you know like four days later when they're like oh I finally got it working on my local machine you're like great I'm really excited for you. Um, anyway, for the people who are like more interested in the technical aspect of this, I'll go over it really quickly. This is how it actually works. There's a Node WebKit front end which is the actual application on your machine. And what it does is it installs VirtualBox and Vagrant for you, and then runs a bunch of puppet manifests that are stored in a GitHub repo, which is open source called Calistack, and that will set up your entire virtual machine locally. And then it works on, the, on Terminus, which is like the Pantheon uh, like pseudo API that connects to them and lets you do like workflow operations. And we built a thing on top of it called Terminator, which is also open source, which you can use to like actually do a lot of that stuff. And uh, it was all made possible by science, which is uh, what makes many things possible and is a powerful tool in general. Anyway, uh, any Bill O'Reilly fans in the house? No, not, not a single Bill O'Reilly fan in the house. Are there any fans of this Do It Live video on YouTube? Okay, there we go. This is for you then. Anyway, yeah, so like, I talked a lot about like, the things that are in Calibox, but I think it's much better to just show, show it. So we're going to do a little, a little live demo, and hopefully it goes well. And if it doesn't, I might just drop this mic and leave. So that could be exciting for you as well. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. Well, there we go. No. We'll do it live! Thanks, Matt. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so this is the Calibox UI. I've started it. It's, uh, it's got all these like, things that lets you know that, that things are happening. 
Um, when we were designing it, like it was weird because we we didn't we wanted this like to fill up the whole space, but it didn't. So we just added a bunch of like fun things into it, like like your spirit animal. Uh, mine is the fire phoenix. But uh, if you download uh, the new version that's coming out, it'll it, during the installation workflow, it'll ask you a bunch of questions, and depending on your answer, it will designate a fire animal or a spirit animal animal for you. So uh, don't worry, that's like in the it's in the issue queue. It's coming. Um, Anyway, yeah. So, like, let's let's get let's get started and just kind of look at all the all the fun things that this that comes with uh, with comes with the Calibox. Um, yeah. So you have like a nice UI. It's like not super complicated. Things are pretty clear. You have your home tab that has like all this stuff on it. Some important tools that you can use. This will like theoretically list your sites. We have none now, so it lists nothing. And then right now, this will authenticate you with Pantheon, and you can do like the workflow magic. So let's just start with something basic, which is just like creating a site. Are there any, uh, is there a favorite U.S. president in the house? Like, does anyone have, like, a favorite U.S. president at all? Rutherford B. Hayes? Great. That's my favorite president, too. He stole that election in 1876. False. Rutherford fraud, B. Hayes. Totally false. Don't listen to this naysayer. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so I think he was the 19th president, so we'll just call this site Big 19. And, uh, yeah, so we'll just, like, set up this Drupal site. And you can see the magic wheel is spinning. The Drupal site is coming down. And this will also be a great test to see how good the conference Wi-Fi is, because this is all going to be coming from uh, Drupal.org. Um, and while it's happening, we can kind of like, there you go. Conference Wi-Fi has, has spoken. So that's bad. Let's try it again. Or maybe I could connect to my phone and do it, which could be good as well. Let's give it a shot one more time. Uh, maybe another U.S. president? Chester A. Arthur? I'm a big Gilded Age fan. So let's do this. And see if the conference Wi-Fi... Uh... Do it live! Yes, it's happening. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! If this doesn't work out, I'm just going to like connect my uh, thing to my... Okay, let's do this. I'm going to tether this to my phone and we're going we're gonna to do it live. Huh? I know. Well, well luckily, luckily, Drupal seven is really small. If this was Drupal eight, I might like run out of my like data on this on this one download. So, ouch! Um, ouch! I, it's just like I mean, like, I think there's like a that's a fact, right? I mean, it's like definitely. And yeah, we got rid of overlay module in Drupal eight. At least you don't have to download that. <laughs> that's a good point. Okay, let's see. We'll do it live! Go back. <laughs> yes, excellent. Okay, so let's see if this Five, can... Five, four, three. There's no, there's no words on it. it. We'll do it live. What's that? I've never seen that. No Just Convention Center? There's no, there's no what are you doing over there? I've never seen that. I'm really sorry for the profanity in that, actually. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just have a soundboard I'm clicking on, I found on the internet. All right, we have, we have regained connectivity to something. Let's explore this space. Uh, let's do... Uh, Bubba? Bubba? Was that the nickname? All right. Uh, okay. All right. Let's give it another shot. I have a sneaky suspicion that this actually might be the same situation uh, between the two conference Wi-Fi's, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, while this is while this is theoretically spinning up in the background, we can go through and like look at some of the whoever set up the Wi-Fi here. Go, go. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you don't do live demos. All right. It's sad when I can only rely on AT&T to solve my data needs. <laughs> Let's try this again. <laughs> Did someone just have a town? Was, that, was there a Time Warner shout out down here by someone? <laughs> okay. Okay. There you go. All right. So now we're connected to my phone. And uh, let's see how this works. Hopefully better. We'll do it live. Yes, we are going to do it live. No. We'll do it live. I'm, running out, I'm also running out of presidents. So. Lincoln? <laughs> Lincoln? Yeah, that's a way more exciting. Is Lincoln's boring? And Cleveland was president twice, the twenty second and the twenty fourth president. That's right. And was also chief chief justice, or was that that was Taft? That was Taft. Yeah, sorry. 
Okay. Third time's a charm. Oh. Fourth time's a charm. This isn't William Jennings Bryan running for president. I mean, he tried, but I don't know. That populist fervor, I guess people don't like that, huh? Anyway, so Wi-Fi is looking maybe like it. I mean, like tethering looks like maybe it's the way to go here. So anyway, that was, that was a fun little adventure. Let's get back to the, to the stuff that's happening. So anyway, your site's downloading the background now, which is great. And there's all these other great tools that are baked into the whole thing. For example, like you can do a one click and you have like your PHP my admin just ready to go, which is nice. Right now we have no databases. Actually, that's not true. We have this, this database, which maybe is the one that we're downloading right now, uh, which is really cool. And, uh, you know, so you can have this like right out of the box, which is like really sweet. And you also have like other tools, like if you use WebGrind, for example, which is like a profiling utility, like that's all set up for you, ready to go. So you can start to do that sort of magic. Um, You've also got this like, this like uh, engage button here, which is like if you're if you're coding and you're like feeling really down about yourself, you can click on this, and it will load up this video of like of uh, Patrick Stewart. When you're home to life. This will load up an advertisement from YouTube <laughs> for uh, chairs. This will load up a video of Patrick Stewart, so you can like when you're when you're the depths of like development pain, you can load this up and like have a smile, and then by the time it's over, you can bounce back. And like you know, your site is like has been spun up or not spun up, I guess, and uh, you can be ready to go. Let's uh, let's restart the whole thing. Sometimes the internet is finicky, so we'll do that really quickly. And while we're doing that, what's really nice about Calibox is that all the code that's like stored inside your VM is like also available to you like on your desktop. So you can like go through here and you can like select a folder and like load it up, which is like really really awesome. And you can work on like whatever tools you want. Like I know there are like some like local development environments or like integrated workflow solutions, which is like what Calibox is, where you have to like use the tools that they ship with uh, to do like the editing and the stuff like that. And I, I don't really like that. Like people should like feel free to use the tools that they actually want to use. So we expose your code. You can use whatever sort of tools you want. And I think that that's like a way better way to go about like this sort of thing than uh, than just like enforcing like those sort of things because those those are those are decisions that developers really like to make on their own. Um, so we definitely don't try to get in the way of that. Um, anyway, let's go back here and like once this thing gets started, hopefully our site will be will be there. It's not, so that's great. We'll give this another shot, and then we'll if this doesn't work, like it'll uh, we'll we'll just move on to other things, um, which is unfortunate. But this is like a 50-50 thing, depending on like how the conference Wi-Fi goes. Like so, thought we'd give it a shot. Thought we'd do it live. If I were Bill O'Reilly right now, I'd be, I'd be swearing profusely and throwing things, but I'm not him, um, so we're not going to do that. Anyway, thank you. Fucking thing sucks! Yes, exactly. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted to see. Very good. So actually what we can do is like we can actually investigate this problem, <clears throat> which is because one of the cool things about Calibox, and this is like what makes it a little bit different than like MAMP, is like, we do like set up like same defaults for you out of the box. Like we have like Nginx and Apache and like all that or and all that fun stuff set up. But you can also SSH into the machine, which is what I've done right now, and check like everything that's going on like inside of it. If you want to add new stuff, you can do that. Yes, thank you. I think the problem was that that maybe Calibox just doesn't work if you use a president as like the site name, which means that potentially the NSA is watching all of us right now. So there you go. That's gonna be my theory for the day. Anyway, here we go. We have a site. That's really awesome. We can click on it. And uh, we have it in the browser. Welcome to Ga. I don't know what Ga is. I think I was just getting a little bit nervous, and I typed something in. Anyway, here's your Drupal site. We spun it up really quickly. That's really awesome. And like, we can look into this code directory like I was just showing you earlier. Let's see. It's in this. Uh, it'll go into your home folder in Calibox. And it's in this www directory. And like, here you go. Like, here's, all your, here's all your stuff. And if you're like me and you like Sublime Text, you can just like, totally throw that in there. And like, all your code is there, which is like, really sweet. Um, so once Sublime Text loads, it will show you that. Um, so let's go back to the magic here. Oh, there it is. So like that. Yeah, sorry, those are your code. So like I could go in here and like do something like really awesome. Like say like I'm like oh Drupal is really complicated. I just want a static HTML site. I love conference Wi-Fi so much. And we've typed that into our local machine. We go back here. Oh, or we go to another thing completely. I didn't want to do that. Sorry. We go to back to the site and like boom, there we go. Like we've edited our code on the other machine. It goes into the VM 
and that the magic has happened. So that's really good. Um, one of the other things really cool is, uh, is the workflow integration I was talking about. So I'll like, set up this, this account for myself. I'm going to log into Pantheon. It's going to go up and it's going to do the magic. It's going to get all your sites and like, show them all your cattle blocks so you can download them. And we're going to feel really confident about the Wi-Fi. So we're going we're gonna to do it again and see if it actually works and, uh, and, and risk it, risk it all. And while that's happening, while we're downloading this site, so I have three sites on Pantheon. There they are. They just showed up. We know that they're on Pantheon because there's that cloud logo, which is a metaphor of some kind, I'm sure. And uh, so I have, like four, I have like three sites here. One of them is a social coding for good site, which we did for a nonprofit for free. Um, and you get these options when you want to download and pull a site from Calibox, which is really sweet. You can download, we have it optionally, so you can download your Drupal files because sometimes you don't really need that and uh, we don't want to have that be enforced because some sites have like gigabytes and gigabytes of files. You can also download whatever backup you want, create a new one um, from your database. So we'll just submit this and see what happens. We'll roll the dice again because, you know, go big or go home. Um, anyways, yeah, so let's get back to this, which is that I have SSH into this machine. And this is, like, I think where power users can really develop, uh, really benefit a lot from Calibox, which is, like, it's really easy to set up. Like, we've set some sane defaults for me. We set some things that are, like, pretty normal. But now you can go and you can add something. You can add whatever you want. So say, like, you're doing, like, this weird implementation where you need, like, Apache Tikka to do, like, PDF indexing or something. You can go in here and just do your normal, like, Linux stuff and, like, add Tikka in there, which is, like, really awesome. And all your sites are in there. Like, you can see the site's happening right there. You can also see that, like, the Social Coding for Good site is being downloaded right now, which is good news um, based on previous experience in the last 15 minutes. And you have all the power. Like, you can do whatever you want. Like, you are logged in as, like, a pseudo user. You can, like, change this around in whatever possible way. And the nice thing about it is, like, all this stuff is actually in VirtualBox. So if you, like, had a specific configuration, you could just export it and save it and use it later if you wanted to, which is really nice. So that's... That's one of the really awesome things about Calibox is it's, it's, it's for novices and for pros, which I think is super awesome. Um, and when this, when this site is downloaded, we'll show you a couple of the more magics, and then we'll move on to, to the other things that are even more uh, magical. And uh, let's see. And we can change this back to the normal Drupals while we're waiting because that's what this conference is for. So I've done that, and there we go. I've got normal Drupal back. And you can go in here and you can look and you can see that like the database is in here. So if you're like the kind of person who likes to go in and just like edit databases for fun, um, you can go in and do that. Uh, so there we go. Yeah. So we'll wait. We'll wait for this site to download. This is like a Panoply site, so it's a little bit bigger than just like normal Drupal. But let's continue on the presentation and we can return to that at a later time. Um. Anyway, yeah. So Calibox is free. We made it free. Uh, we wanted it to be free. We thought that it was a great tool for people to use. We didn't want it to be proprietary. We wanted it to be out there for everyone to try. And it's been like in a prototype stage for quite a while now. We have over 1,000 people using it. There are people at Arizona State University using it. There are people at the Congressional Budget Office using it. There are people at Politico using it. And they're all having a great time with it. And I've gone around to like a lot of camps in the last year talking about it and like hearing a lot of people, uh, a lot of people's feedback, and getting their their kind of comments on it, and like what we could do to make it better. And uh, we already think that we already think that um, you know that Calibox is like the best thing out there, like by far. I mean, there's no, there's nothing else that really does this in like the kind of way that this that this that this does. Like nothing else is like really really easy to use. Is like a legitimate web server that you can interact with in the way that you're familiar in the way that makes sense. That has relative production parity and has workflow integration with like the other platform tools that you use. That being said, there's a lot of really interesting tech that's come out lately, and we're really interested in like doing a lot more with Calibox. And I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to you a little bit more about that right now. Like what things we can do in the future to make this even better than it already is. And what that means in like short terms is this better, faster, stronger. But I want to get into the specifics as to what that really means, like both from a technical perspective and what that's gonna mean for like individuals and Drupal shops to help solve your problems, because at the end of the day, that's like what this is all about. So one of the things we really want to do with Calibox is we want to provide a platform API. Right now, Calibox only works with Pantheon, which is, which is great, and it works that way because we use Pantheon at Kalamuna. Um, but there's a lot of other people who want to use Calibox but can't because they use other things, like these things, for example, Acquia and Agar and Aberdeen Cloud and DigitalOcean and things like that. So one of the things that we really want to do is provide an API for people to write plugins for their own platforms, the platforms that they're using, 
And this is made possible by an open source technology called Switchboard, which is being developed right now by John Peck, who is sitting over there in the green shirt and has the amazing, amazing beard. Do not tug on it. If you see him, it will make him very angry. Um, or he might smile. I mean, you could roll the dice on that one, too. But anyway, we want to be able to provide integration for all these things. And not just for platform providers, but for other things as well. For example, like a lot of people do continuous integration and continuous delivery. So how great would it be for you to develop locally with a team on Calibox and to be able to push what you've done through Git up to some sort of continuous integration server? Jenkins is the obvious example. Like those kinds of things could be really, really powerful and really, really easy to set up, and you wouldn't have to waste a ton of time. One of the other really cool things is being able to just like, if you're a novice user who doesn't really understand a lot about any of these things, being able to download Calibox, install it, you know, install a Drupal site, build the Drupal site really easily, and then just to, de to deploy it to whatever you want. All with the UI, you don't have to know what any of these tools are. And that's really, really important because Drupal is difficult. And I don't know if any of you have looked around lately, but I haven't seen anyone who's below the age of 24 in here. And I think that's a problem. And one of the problems is because the, the, a lot of the other technologies that are out there right now, like Ruby on Rails and stuff like that, are really easy to use. And they're fun and exciting to use. And Drupal is 10 years old, and we need to bring more people into the ecosystem. And what that means is that we need to provide tools that enable that from happening. And I think that we all get stuck in our own little space in Drupal, and we forget that there's people outside of us. Lots of people. Lots of people who, you could, who want to use Drupal and would use Drupal if they could. So what we want to do is to help make that happen. And I think this is a big step forward. It's to like open up the space and let Calibox work with more things so we can bring more people into the ecosystem because ultimately that's going to be why we succeed or fail. Um, the other really, really, really exciting thing that we want to do for Calibox is switch it to use Docker. I'm not sure if anyone, anyone here is familiar with Docker. It's, uh, it's this really cool tool that uh, is kind of on top of like LXC container technology, which you've probably heard a lot about during this conference already. Um, it's really, really exciting. It's so good that it's not even in production, and companies like OpenShift, I think, or OpenStack or something are actually using it, regardless of the warnings that are plastered all over Docker's GitHub page. Um, and what this means for Calibox, it's going to be way, 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 way faster than it previously was before, which is really awesome. Um, and what it also means is now you can have one website per server, which is really, really exciting as well. The thing that's most powerful about this is because Docker is like, is what it is, which is a containerized system where you can move things around really easily. Now you can think of a whole kind of thing where you have plugins for Calibox, and you can have whatever web server you want. So if you don't like the stuff that comes with Calibox, if you run like Apache and MariaDB, or if you run, you know, Varnish and Nginx and Redis and all that other stuff, you can build your own containers in Docker, and you can import them into Calibox. And what that means is that Anyone here who has a development team and has existing tools, all you need to be able to do is move them into Docker containers, and now you can put Calibox on top of it, which is really, really exciting, because what that means is that now your like, head of engineering is the only person who really has to deal with that sort of stuff. And you can easily deploy your like, custom environment to all of the people who are on your team, which is really, really, really powerful. Um, so you can use your existing tools, which is awesome. Right now, like if you have Calibox, like you have to go into the actual VM and you know do the stuff I was showing you before, like SSH in and like add stuff that way. But this way, you can have standardized environments and you can deploy across multiple teams. You can onboard people really quickly, which is awesome. The other thing we want to do is provide support for Windows. We've got like I've definitely gone around the country a lot this year, and people are like, Calibox is super awesome. I want to be able to use it. I want to standardize on it. But people on my team use Windows. And I'm like, that's sad. But that being said, there are tons of people on Windows who like, want to be more engaged in the Drupal community, and we make it really hard for them. And that's unfortunate as well. So one of the things we really, really want to do is we want to bring Windows support for Calibox so that people on Windows can now use this thing. And now you can have a development team that uses one local development solution, one integrated workflow solution, not a bunch of them, which is also really powerful for obvious reasons. So Windows support is super important. We want to make that happen. We want to bring that to Calibox. What about Linux? It already works on Linux. Yeah, what about Linux? For Windows. Uh, we, work. Yeah, yeah. It already, it already actually, if you, if you like download the, just a the node application by itself, like it'll, work, it'll work on Linux right now. So it's not documented, but it will. But yes, we are going to do that as well. Um, and this is the big thing. Right now, Calibox is free, but it's not open source. We want to make it open source. We want to put it out there. And we want, to, we want the community to drive its growth going forward because it's really important for us to converge on a common standard here. 
And by common standard, I don't mean that Calibox should replace what you're using. I think that Calibox should enable what you're using. Like all the tools that you already have, Calibox can like be surfaced on top of that. And we can all manage it together. Calamuna has been doing this like by ourselves for a couple of years now. And we've gotten to a point where like people are excited about it. I think there's definitely a space for it. As Matt mentioned, like MAMP is a dinosaur. And this uses technologies that are like very, very new. And we want everyone to be able to use them, and we should all develop them together. So we want to make Calibox open source so we can drive the development going forward. And I think that that's really, really important. So if you're a visual learner, this is kind of what Calibox looks like now, which is this kind of complicated thing. You have these like very, very immutable objects, a lot of moving parts, not a lot of integration, and everything kind of sits on this Calistack stack thing. And this is what we want it to look like in the future, which is that it will work on any operating system. It'll have like a very small VM, and then you can build basically whatever sort of web server you want inside of it based on this plugin system that I was telling you about, and you can integrate with whatever sort of stuff you want to. So I don't know about you, but that sounds like basically exactly what we all should be doing. Um, and I think that it makes all the things that are out there look kind of like a joke. Um, so this is, this is what we should be doing, and we all should be doing it together. So what will it take to make this happen? Well, the good thing about it is we already have the tools. We already have the talent, and we actually have a plan to make this happen, and it's actually starting to happen right now. What we really need to take it to the next level is community support, which means support from all of you. And that can be development support, other kinds of support, word of mouth, getting the word out there, talking about this thing, using it, on your using it with your teams, like using it by yourself, all sorts of stuff. And if we can all do this, if we can make this vision possible, what this will mean is that we'll solve the local development problem and that it will be part of the community. The community will be the one who's responsible for managing it going forward. It won't be us. It won't be any one company with some proprietary solution. It will be a, a community-driven solution, which is, I think, what Drupal is supposed to be all about. So that's really powerful, and that's what we want to do. The other thing that this means is like, you can level up all of your internal teams. Like, you don't have to use, you can keep your existing tools, but you can use Calibox, and you can onboard developers super fast, and you can deploy it to everyone, which is really awesome. And this will save you tons of time. And if you're a shop owner or the leader of a development team in here, I don't think I need to explain what that means. And more importantly, as I mentioned before, we need to open the door to new users. There needs to be more people involved in Drupal. And things like Calibox can make that happen. Even really great tools uh, that are out there that let you spin up sites you know, in the cloud, you still need to know about SFTP and Git and stuff like that to make it happen. With Calibox, you don't. All you have to do is download it. People are familiar with downloading things. You can install it. It's easy to install Drupal, as you saw before. And you can just kind of roll with that, which is awesome. So that's what this all means. And I think this is really, really exciting. And I think that we should all do this. And you should all help us do it. So what, we're, what, what I want to do today right now is talk about this vision and how to make it happen. And if you go to this website, you'll see that we've started a Kickstarter, which I think is the first Kickstarter that has happened in Drupal to support something like this. And I would encourage you to go to this page and to donate to the Kickstarter campaign to help make this vision possible. And if we can get to $23,000, we'll make all this stuff open source. And we will definitely, and I, I think that would be a big win for the entire community, which is going to be really, really awesome. So please come to the site. Please go to the, the link here and, uh, and help us build this thing. I think it's going to be really exciting. Um, and let's make this the thing to use. Let's like find a standard. Let's, like, let's do this. Uh, let's not like do MAMP anymore because it's embarrassing. Anyway, uh, thank you. Actually, let's go back and see if there's like, if this site is. Oh, there we go. So yeah, here's our site from Pantheon that we were doing earlier. And uh, you can load it up. It'll load in your browser really quickly. And you can also see really quickly as well that you have this nice stuff. You can remove it. But you could also go in there and refresh it. So if someone has like provided like new code to your development environment, you know, you can grab that new code. You can grab a new database. You can grab new files really easily, uh, which is really cool. So that's all the magic. And uh, I think we have like 15 minutes left, so maybe we can take some, some of the questions. Uh, we can
we could definitely take some questions. But I think in general, like, these are the kinds of problems that I think it's really awesome people are solving. And there's different ways to resource and support and make these kinds of things happen. But that having these kinds of tools out there and having these kinds of technologies can be really important. And so what, what, what Mike's showing you, you can download right now, play around with on your Mac, and like give feedback on that. There's also obviously the 2.0 vision that you can support and otherwise just get involved with. But I think it's nice to see innovation and nice to see stuff happening. And if folks have questions about, about the plan, the project, the technology, how some of this stuff is using, there's some microphones um, there at least. Um, or you can yell it out. I'll repeat it for the recording. Also, also and, uh, we can do some little QA. We have like we have like 38 backers right now. So we we did the Kickstarter like like 30 hours ago, and we already have 38 backers. If we can get to 100 before DrupalCon is over, we will release a version of Talibox 1.0, which you can download right now for free, that has Drupal 8 in it. So people who are like working on Drupal 8 can have something to to spin up really quickly. So that's just an FYI for for all you guys. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's ask a few questions, talk about the process, and um, just see how people feel uh, in the front. Uh, so I, w I was just a little unclear on uh, one thing as far as sure. the code base and the files. Sure. Are those um, those being downloaded to the local machine and then linked into the virtual machine, or are they on the virtual machine and then linked back to the local machine? Yeah. So all the all the files and code and database that you have, uh, like on Pantheon right now, are actually downloaded to the virtual machine, and then they're shared through. Only your code is shared through to your actual host machine, which in this case is the, is the Mac. Okay, okay. But your yeah, database and your files, that's all in the VM. We recently did it in Vagrant the other direction and managed to get it to work on Windows and Mac, but it was, it was a little crazy. Right, so in the, in the Calibox 2.0 vision, we're actually going to not use Vagrant. We're going to use the boot to Docker CLI, which has a lot of really cool stuff in there. And one of the people who's working on Calibox, his name is James Halliday. You might know him as Substack in the Node.js community. He wrote this really cool thing that's similar to the auto rsync thing that happens in Vagrant 1.5 plus. And we're going to be using something like that to manage files in between like the, the Docker containers and uh, the host machine. That's, ex that's actually what we went with, yeah. Oh, cool. cool. Very awesome. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. Awesome. Next up. Hello. Um, Hi. Regarding Vagrant. Uh, yeah. How hard is it to integrate your own Vagrant files if you already have them, if, if uh, your, your VM setup is not just plain vanilla? Uh, what do you mean by integrate? Like, can I download it and then say, instead of using whatever the, the Vagrant file that you have written, use sure, this yeah. one instead? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So th there's, a, there's, a, there's actually a configuration file. You can provide your own default. Or you can provide your own config configuration file for like our Vagrant file. Um, if you go to like the Kala stack, repository on GitHub, you'll see, you'll see where that is, and you can edit it and, and use that if you want to as well. So, cool. Yeah, there's lots of things you can conf configure. Yeah, thanks. Cool. So Calibox 1.0 is, uh, you know, fantastic for individual developers in which you can, you know, work on a local site, you know, so, you know push it up to Pantheon and so forth. Uh, with Calibox 2.0, what kind of uh, team-oriented options are, especially if you have, like, multiple people who are working on the same project, the same code base, uh, is there any? Is there going to be any kind of mechanism where you can say deploy a particular Calibox configuration that everybody on the team can use? Yeah, sure. So this is one of the main reasons why we moved to the Docker kind of situation, which is that if we're having Doc, if we have Docker and we have a plugin system, then if you're like the lead, if you're leading like a development team or you're the engineer who's providing like all the IT for it, you can write your own Docker containers that you need specifically for that project. When whether that matches your production server or whether that's like an internal tool that you guys use. Anything that can be put into a Docker container can be used on Calibox now, which is really, really powerful. So you can, you can, you can do that, and you can deploy it to all the people on your team. And you can have multiple ones of them if you want as well. You can start with Vagrant if you want to. Anything that can be put into a Docker con container can be used with Calibox. So any version control, um, any configure it management system you want to use, all that stuff. So it's really, really powerful. Cool. <clears throat> yeah, with 1.0, uh, how can you add your own, your own like, custom profiles to it? Is, is it possible? Um, what do you mean exactly by custom profiles? Just if I had my own um, you know, Drupal profile on around, you know, sure. Actually, <laughs> if you go to the Kickstarter page, yeah. one of the uh, one of the prize levels is that we'll ship you like a custom version of Calibox when it comes out that has your custom distributions built into it. But, um, no but because yeah. yeah, because Calibox because we want to make Calibox open source, if we hit our goal, like you'll be able to go in and you'll be able to easily see where the distributions are specified in Calibox. So you could just add your own onto that and compile the whole thing and have your own custom version. 
Okay. So you can use whatever whatever distribution, like whatever your custom distribution is with Drupal, you can you can use. But that's in the 2.0, not the 1.0. That'll be in the 2.0, yeah. Okay. The 1.0, 1.0 the actually, um, we're going to open source that as well uh, once we hit the goal. So you can actually go in and do that as well. So okay. you, can do that, you can do that for that. Fantastic. Hi. Hi. Um, I just want to second the, the Linux version. Okay, we can run the Node.js version, but is sure. that going to be a part of the... Kickstarter goal or just to have a yeah. package version? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the nice thing about, so we're going to be using the boot to Docker CLI, which is cross-platform. So I think that with the work that we've already done, I think that it actually almost 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 works on Linux right now anyway. So yeah, we're going we're gonna to do that. Okay, definitely. Cool. Yeah. And then I have a second question. Have you heard of or worked with the Proviso project? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, Proviso is a really, really sweet project, and actually came out of a conversation that that Calamuna and a bunch of other companies had, ZipTech and like My Planet Digital and some other people at the last DrupalCon. And there's a lot of momentum to it. And I think that the Proviso project can still happen and should still happen, and all the stuff that that happens from that can still be ex can be exported into Docker containers and put into Calibox. So I don't think they're competing visions. I think that there that there's a lot of mutual benefit from from both of them happening at the same time. Okay. But the project the Proviso project is really great. And if people are interested in checking it out, I suggest that you do that. It's, it's really, really awesome. Cool. Any other questions? Any other US history questions, presence questions, science questions? So what happens if you don't succeed with your funding goal? Because I know with Kickstarter, it's like an all or nothing. It is an all or nothing. I think that we're, we're pretty confident that we will succeed. Otherwise, we wouldn't have done this. Um, but if we don't succeed, then I guess you can have fun with MAMP for the rest of your life. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> Sorry, it's <laughs> the best answer I have. Yeah, so you wouldn't you wouldn't ever open source one. Um, we probably we probably we probably would, but it's not in like one of the one of the things we want to do is we want to get so you can open source something and then you can take a shit on the internet, you know. And right now we want to open source something that is like easy to use and is like logical and people and people can see it and they're like, oh, I understand how this works and I understand how to contribute to it. And you know, Calibox One is a prototype. We built it you know, just to kind of do a proof of concept. So we can open source it, but whether anything happens with it, I don't, I don't know, you know. And that's, like, why we want to do the 2.0. We want to build it in a way so the community can really plug into it and, like, develop it really well and take it, like, further down the road. Hi. Hello. Um, does this depend on a constant Internet connection? Like, what if you have to work offline sometimes. Sure, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, f I fly around a lot, so like not having an internet connection is something that I'm familiar with. Um, so you'll definitely need an internet connection to install it and to like do your workflow operations with platform providers. But once that's gone, once once you have your site locally, like you don't need an internet connection to like actually work on your code. Hi. Hey, what's up? What's up, man? Um, so one question about the new the new vision for 2.0, the sure. container model using Docker. Um, What's your thought about environment parity at that point? Since, I mean, if you're only talking about Pantheon, fine. But when you're talking about other, other hosts that aren't using that same model, what's, what's the consideration there? Throw it all in one container or for, par for parity? You know, like say Aqua environment or something else. Sure, so the way that we're gonna write the plugin system is actually we're going to have it set up so you can specify, if you wanna put everything into if you want to put everything into one container, if you want Redis and Solar and Apache and MySQL to be in one container, you certainly can do that. But if you want to have all those things in different containers talking to each other, which is like probably a better model of a lot of a lot of cloud providers like systems, you can do that as well. And we're we basically are we've we've written the plugin for Pantheon because we use Pantheon. But we wanted to build the API so other people can provide plugins that make sense for them. Um, however, like there is a Kickstarter level beyond the minimum which if met means that we will provide like relatively good mockups of like the Aquia environment and the Aberdeen cloud environment for you guys to use just right out of the box. Well, that's going to be that's going to depend on on, the, on what we can raise in the Kickstarter. Anything else? Matt, do you have any questions? No, but um, I mean if you don't meet the funding goal and this code needs to be on the internet, I'm sure uh, I'm sure something will show up on Pastebin um, <laughs> <laughs> for uh, for everyone who wants to play around with it cuz code should be free. Um, Go should be free. But no, I, everyone, I, I think thanks everyone for coming out, checking out this tech. Like, you know, it's really exciting to try to do cool stuff in Drupal. It's awesome to see Calibox. It's awesome to see people try to solve local dev. And hopefully everybody has a great, fabulous time the rest of the conference doing the things you love, talking to your friends. So go DrupalCon, go Austin, and much love to everyone here. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. And, uh, 
after you leave here, go and tell 10 people about this because it's going to make all of our lives easier and it's really important that it happens. And if you don't do it, I will come and find you. Yay.